Well, good morning again. Uh, we apologize. There are just network issues, whether it's got to do with the weather, we're not too sure, but uh, we're still live, but you are going to watch a slightly delayed. It is wonderful uh, to be together in a different way this morning. We're disappointed about the drive-in service, but uh, nonetheless, we are all together. Uh, we're going to begin with a song. If you don't know it, you're going to have some time to learn it. It starts with the first uh, line and then there's a, an echo after that. So let's start with a worship, a worship song. Hail Jesus, you're my King. service. Uh, tomorrow is World Teacher Day and so we had planned at the end of last year to have this appreciation service because teachers, educators are, are so uh, vital in our lives and, and they go through a lot on an ordinary day um, and now we just throw COVID in and goodness it's been quite a year. So we had planned to pray for teachers but we'd also planned to give a little gift pack so if you are disappointed like we are, we have made a plan for you to still collect your gift little bag. Uh, so tomorrow morning, Monday the 5th of October, between quarter to seven and half past seven, Tash and I are going to be standing on the field uh, just at that little, um, well kind of turn off that little edge. So you can just stop there, we'll give you a gift bag if you're a teacher, if you're a student, don't try your luck here. Um, we are, yeah, so, so pull off and, and we'll give you a, a gift bag just to acknowledge what you've done for us and what you do for our children, what you do for students everywhere. If you are on the other side of town or you are committed in the morning, tomorrow afternoon, Monday afternoon, between three and half past three at Wiley Park, I'm going to be there with uh, some gift bags if, uh, if you want to come past and walk my dogs, I mean, collect the gift bag, then come and see me then. Uh, and that's just a small token of our appreciation and just our love for teachers. So if you are a teacher at the moment, if you're an educator of any kind, even if you are newly retired, Mrs. Ferraris, you are more than welcome to collect an appreciation gift. That is the first notice. The second notice is that on the 25th of October in three weeks time we will be having our first live streaming event one where the sound will work and the upload speed will be better uh, we need you each individual who is planning on being at that service to book your place and so the week before on that Sunday the 18th of October we'll send out the link and you need to for each person in your household fill out 
that booking form. It's not just a matter of booking your place, it's also letting us know that you are COVID free and that you are not a risk to somebody else um, health wise. So we do that as a measure to protect ourselves, but also government regulations require us to ask these kind of questions. So that is on the 25th of October, which we are looking forward to. We're going to light our candle and while we do that, we are going to pray. In fact, just before I do that, I'm going to read a scripture. Sorry. I've been reading a book and, and the author suggested that we all as humans share something in common. And that something is that we're hungry. Whether we are hungry for approval, for affirmation, for, for love, for belonging, for purpose. Waking up in the morning and knowing that, that I'm here for a reason. We're hungry. All of us. Are hungry spiritually speaking we're hungry there is a hole in our lives and we try and fill it with all sorts of things but God reminds us that he is the source of everything I read from us uh, I read from Isaiah for us Isaiah 55 verse 1 to 3 come all who all you who are thirsty come to the waters and you who have no money come buy and eat come buy wine and milk without money and without cost why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good and you will delight in the richest of fare. Give ear and come to me, listen that you may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, my faithful love promised to David. We give thanks to the Lord for his reading this morning. Let us bow our heads in a moment of prayer as we light the candle. This morning, Lord, we acknowledge that we are hungry, that we are in need, that we are a people who are searching for something, whether it's love, affirmation, whether it's just a sense of belonging or a sense of purpose, knowing why we're here. We are hungry. Lord, we thank you this morning that you are the God who satisfies every need. And so we come to your throne of grace this morning, thanking you for your Grace, thanking you for your mercies that are new every morning. Thanking you for who you are, the very presence in our lives. Thanking you, God, that you are the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. We give you thanks for that sure knowledge that we can wake up every morning know knowing that you are the same God. Lord, as we gather this morning, we ask that you would bless this time. We ask that you would presence yourself in this time. Holy Spirit, we pray that you would come and and, and feast with us as we feast on the living God. And as we sit in wonder and in worship of who you are, we ascribe greatness to who you are. Because you are worthy. Because you are the Lord God Almighty. You are the Alpha and the Omega. We give you praise and you alone. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen.
we hand over to our readers, Saki and Tamron, as they read our scriptures for us. Our first reading comes from Philippians 2, verses 5 to 11. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Our second reading this morning is from Philippians 3, 4b to 14. And I'm reading from the NLT version. Indeed, if others have reason for confidence in their own efforts, I have even more. I was so concise when I was eight days old. I am a pure-blooded citizen of Israel and a member of the tribe of Benjamin, a real Hebrew, if there ever was one. I was a member of the Pharisees who demanded the strictest obedience to the, Jew the Jewish law. I was so zealous that I harshly persecuted the church, and as for righteousness, I obeyed the law without fault. I once thought these things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage, so that I could gain Christ and become one with him. I no longer count my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous through faith in Christ. For God's way of making us right with him self depends on faith. I want you to know Christ. I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him, sharing in his death, so that one way or another I will experience the resurrection from the dead. I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things, or that I have already reached perfection, but I press on to the, possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, Forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead, I press on to reach the end of the race, and I receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Thanks be to God for his word. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you so much to Lisa Clare and, uh, and Tamron and uh, Saki and everyone else who's um, helped make this the service possible this morning. Again, our, our apologies for the live feed not working out, but um, you know, first it's the weather, then it's technology, and now I see the sun's coming out. <laughs> uh, so, so anyway, we're just rolling with the punches this morning. Um, today, we, uh, we're going to continue with this whole journey uh, theme that we started last week, um, the, the idea of, of going on, on a journey, of, of traveling somewhere. Um, and as I was thinking about uh, the sermon today, oh, sorry, before I carry on, also just a reminder that we're sharing in communion just now. So um, if you find I'm droning on a little bit and you need something to do, go and get your, uh, your communion things uh, ready so that we can share in that just now. Anyway, back to journeys, to uh, these, these trips that we take. Journeys are such important parts or aspects of our lives. And what I want to put to you this morning is that in one way or another, we are all on a journey. 
everything is always in transition. I'm sorry to break that to you, but nothing ever stays exactly the same. So whether you want to or not, and whether you choose to admit it or not, everything is in motion. Scientists have even discovered that those inanimate parts of creation, those parts that are supposed to be dead and not moving, even those are in a state of transition. They, they vibrate, they give off a frequency, they even make, they even make a sound. Like Jesus said, um, even the rocks cry out to praise God. So um, even you and I are in a constant state of transition. We're all on a journey of change and learning. And there's some journeys that we welcome. There, there's some journeys that we just can't wait to take. And there are other journeys that we dread and that we, we wish we didn't have to go, go on. Um, I can remember growing up, uh, I would, we, we would take delight in, in measuring our development. Um, these these uh, stages that we go through. I can remember... I can remember the day that I grew taller than my mother. It's like, I don't know why, it's just this important thing in a boy's life. You know, you've got to be taller than your mom. Sorry, Bob. Uh, uh, <laughs> so, uh, there, are these, there are these developments in our lives that we, we just hope and long for. But now I'm also getting to the stage in my life where there are things that are starting to happen to me that um, I wish there would be journeys that I didn't have to take. There are changes that I wish wouldn't happen. But God is with us in all the journeys we take. And God uses the journey we're on for our transformation. Now, just a little aside on some of the journeys that we're on. Um, uh, uh, another realization I've come to is that you can only take one journey at a time. You might be the best multitasker in the world, but you are incapable of being in more than one place at a time. So sometimes a lot of the pain and the conflict that we experience in ourselves is when we try to be on more than one journey. You, you, you can't do that. You, you can't go to the beach and the berg at the same time. You have to make a choice. So you can't be single and married at the same time. You can't be at work and on holiday at the same time. The journeys we take are the most fulfilling when we are fully present to them. So when you are with your family, be with your family. When you are studying for a test, then study for the test. Don't have Netflix going on in the background. When you are listening to a friend, listen to that friend. Stop trying to be somewhere else. You will miss the glory of where you are now if you are never present to where you are. So anyway, God uses the journeys we are on to transform us. It is God's intention to make us more like Christ, to draw us into the fullness of who he created us to be. So God uses all of our experiences, both those those journeys that we welcome and those that are not welcome. He uses all of them to teach us about who God is and to help us to become more of who we are really supposed to be. So as we commit ourselves to following Jesus and surrendering to God's way of love, we open ourselves to God's transformation. Now, Paul writes a letter to the Philippians, and you might have noticed that both our readings come from that letter today. And He's, he's harping on something with them because there is a problem in the Philippian community. There's, there is something that there is a, an attitude that they are engaging in that is incredibly destructive to the journeys that we have to take. This one attitude that they are suffering from has the power to derail the most wonderful of transformations. It has the ability to ruin a church. Uh, it, it has the force to prevent the most amazing discoveries and halts the most important of our journeys. Any thought of what it might be? What is the attitude that they're suffering from? You might have guessed it. Pride. 
Pride gets in the way of some of the journeys that God wants us to take. You can't go anywhere new if you think you've been there already. You can't learn anything new if you think you know it already. Thinking that you are the best of the best, which Paul admits that he suffered from himself. Or thinking that you are at least better than those who are around you, prevents you from ever learning anything from anyone. Now, the teachers tuning in today, you probably know this better than, than the rest of us. I imagine you've had so many students who refuse to listen or to see, and they, and they because of that, they continue only ever to see the world as, they, as they've always seen it. They are never able to change. So none of us like change. We all prefer the familiar and feeling like we know, we know that there is all to know about something. And Paul gives a stern warning, and he uses his own life as an example. He says, I, I walked around thinking that I was the best of the best, that I had achieved everything, and, uh, everything and I, I, sorry, that I'd have, I had achieved everything that I wanted to, and that I knew more than anyone else. Um, and he explains to the Philippians that, that this just sent him on a warpath. It put him in conflict with the people around him. He, he, he ended up hunting those who had a different opinion to his own. And he needed to see things with new eyes. Now, you might be listening to this this morning and thinking, well, thank goodness pride isn't my problem. Um, yeah, that, that might be a little warning sign for you. <laughs> yeah. Actually, there might be some of us who might be thinking, Colin, I actually battle more with a poor self-esteem than with pride. But humility isn't then thinking that you are less than someone else. Humility is valuing others as much as you value yourself. So, so Paul isn't saying, okay, now I'll become the doormat of everyone. He's saying we need to be humble. Humility is faith seeking understanding. Humility is asking for others' opinions, asking for help and listening to others. At some level, pride is something that we all battle with. I would be willing to bet that for each of us, there is a particular type of person that we think we, we are better than, or that we would not find it easy to receive advice or correction from. I love this phrase in English, um, pride comes before the fall. And maybe you've experienced this yourself. When we are filled with pride, what we are trying to do is halt our journey. There's a change that's coming and we, we refuse to budge. We dig our heels in and we try to stop the movement. But remember, God has made everything to be in motion. Everything is in transition. Even you. As correct and in the right position as you think you might be, be in, God is working to move you. And let me warn you, when God wants to move something, he moves it. Paul thought he would be unmoved, but he got knocked off his donkey, and he got left looking like an ass. <laughs> so what are you resisting? What movement of God do you think you know better, and you refuse to move? Paul goes down kicking and screaming. His pride fall happens in the end. I think when we talk about this, we need to, to look at Jesus. Jesus taught something remarkable about the nature of the journey that we need to take. A journey which Henry Nouwen identified as the downward journey. So God models the humility we need by journeying down. Our pride makes us always want to journey upward. We always want to be at the top, to be the master to be in control of those who are below us. And this for centuries was the view that people had of God. God above and beyond. God at the top of the pile. But then Jesus, the Emmanuel, chose to be God with us. He gave up all that power and emptied himself of all but love to journey towards the cross. In humility, he came to die for our sins. And if you think about it, all the arguments and disagreements that he has with the disciples and those around him 
have to do with people wanting the upward journey. The, the disciples fight about who's going to sit where and who gets to do what. And Jesus doesn't allow for that. The arguments that the disciples have with Jesus all the time is when Jesus journeys towards the cross and they don't want him to do that. So as we re receive communion this morning, may we be confronted by Jesus, who, being in the very nature God, did not consider equality with God as something to be used to his advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. Paul uses these words to convince the Philippians of the journey that Christ asked us to take. I believe it's the same journey asked of us today. So what journey are you on? What transition are you in the middle of? Maybe it's a welcomed one. Maybe it's a, it's a very scary one. My prayer is that God would use this journey that you are on to continue his good work in you. And so as we talk about pride and, and the journey that God has us on, we are going to share in communion together. And so I invite us to, to bow our heads in prayer. God of infinite power and brilliance, we celebrate your downward journey towards us. We celebrate the pattern of servanthood you set for us. We celebrate your life that holds and nurtures the universe. We celebrate your love which joins creation as one and unites all things with you. We give thanks for your life which incarnated in Christ and which is revealed in every created being. We savour your presence which is unlimited and welcoming and your spirit which fills every moment of time. But even as we receive again your vision of life, we recognise that we have been blind to its universal heartbeat. Even as we remember the connectedness of all things. We acknowledge that we have divided and separated ourselves and forgotten our part in your creation. Even as we are energized by your breath within us, we confess our reluctance to serve, our unwillingness to move down. We repent of the harm we have done to ourselves and to our world. For the sake of Jesus, the firstborn of all creation, who in death disarmed all that is evil, and in resurrection stripped death of power. We ask you to recreate us, to reconnect us, and to restore us the vision of your life in creation, and the power to live it out. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We are going to share the peace of the Lord with one another here, and I invite you to do that uh, in your homes um, as well. And so, uh, social distancing observed, the peace of the Lord be with you. And also peace with you. Thank you. And also with you. Peace of the Lord be with you. Peace of the Lord be with you. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. And the Lord's glory covers the earth as the waters cover the sea. The trees of the field clap their hands. The birds of the air sing songs of praise. And if we should fail to express our worship, even the rocks and stones would cry out. And so we lift up our hearts and we lift up our voices and we offer thanksgiving and adoration to the Lord, the creator of all. Blessed are you, sovereign of the universe. You have given us the gift of bread to feed and nourish us. And Jesus is lost. And at Jesus' last meal with his friends, before journeying to the cross, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and then passed it among them, saying, This is my body, broken for you. Take and eat, and do this to remember me. 
Blessed are you, sovereign of the universe. You have given us the gift of wine to refresh and heal us. And at the last meal, with his friends, before journeying to the cross, our Lord took the cup of wine and blessed it. And he passed it among them, saying, This is my blood shed for you. Take and drink, and do this to remember me. And so God, we now come before your table, mindful of how you laid down your life, so that we and creation could be born in you. Mindful of how you took your life up again, so that we and creation could be filled with life abundant. Mindful that we cannot earn or purchase this privilege, but that it is your grace which beckons us, and your grace which, which ensures that all creation may be one and whole. May your spirit work in these fruits of earth, so that they may become for us a sharing in Christ's body and blood. May your spirit work in us, we who are your children of earth, so that we may be transformed into Christ's body, carrying his life, his care, and his salvation to all creation. Amen. Amen. This is the body of Christ, broken for us. Take and eat, and remember his goodness. This is the blood of Christ, shed for us. Take and drink, and receive his grace. Amen. 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 Friends, it would have been so awesome to share in communion with you in the same, in the same space, even though you would have been in your cars. But we know that God connects us. In, from our homes and that we are together uh, in his spirit. So I'm going to hand over to uh, Lisa Clare and Tamron as they lead us in our closing song. Thank you everyone for uh, joining in with us today. Um, I hope that you do catch the service in the end. If you're watching, I suppose you did. Um, and I want to just close in, in prayer for us. Let us pray. God of infinite mercy 
and unlimited grace. We thank you for this supper. We thank you that you share it with us and that we share in your spirit. We thank you for Jesus, who makes us new and strong, who brings us life eternal. We thank you for your spirit that guides and helps. We thank you for giving us all good gifts. And we now give ourselves to serve you, even as Christ has served us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.